We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey. And share their family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are in eastern Uganda, Busoga region, famously known as a source of the Great River Nile. Apart from fishing, there are so many other farming activities. So join us in this adventure as we learn more. Here, we meet Christine and Christopher. The couple have lived on this farm since 1973 and have been doing some small-scale farming. Both are retired teachers. Christopher taught fine arts and Christine taught literature. They're not alone on the farm. They have six of their grandchildren living with them. On their farm, they grow bananas, maize, beans, sweet potatoes, and they also have a number of cows. But there are some problems with the cows, and their banana plantation is not looking too well. It looks like they need some expert advice. With the tent up, we start shaping them up. And how are the bananas themselves? Are they healthy? Are they doing well? The soil is not very fertile, unlike uh, the slopes or mountain grass. Or Talking about the soil, have you ever had it tested? No. Uh, so what livestock do you have? We have cows, we have one goat, mm -hmm. and some pigs. Ah. How are your cows doing? Productivity is not good mm -hmm. because of the feeding. How many liters of milk are you getting per day from your cows? Mm -hmm. Get yeah. about five. And their health, are they healthy? I mean, like, do you have any some problems? Ticks. Oh, ticks. Because Worms. we are adding them together with the neighbors. Yeah. neighbors. Well, Christopher and Christine, Shamba Shipper is here. In Shamba today. We'll work with you. We've got experts. Okay. We are going to see how we can help you in your Shamba mm -hmm. to make sure that you are truly shipped up. <coughs> First thing to do on any farm is to have a soil test. The soil care's team is here to show them how to take a sample correctly. The best way for a farmer to do a soil sample is to choose the plot in which he wants to grow his crops. He first starts at a point and then picks the soil from that point and moves in a zigzag manner and makes sure that they collect soil randomly from all parts of the farm. In the case where a farmer does not have a soil auger, which is a special instrument for collecting samples from their farm, the farmer can use a jembe and a panga. And then once they have the sample, they give it to our mobile laboratory where we will do their analysis. Having the soil on your shamba tested is important because it helps you to know what type of fertilizer to apply and what amount to use, which helps you save some money. Soil cares can also save you time. Their soil testing van can come to your village and give you a resort for your soil in two hours. Christopher and Christine results show that their soil is too acidic. Acidic soils stop the plants from using the nutrients in the soil. But they have enough nitrogen and potassium in their soil. Only the phosphorus needs a boost. Phosphorus is needed for roots to grow. To reduce the soil acidity, they need to apply agricultural lime. You should apply 10 to 15 bags per acre. The lime will also give calcium and magnesium to the plants, which helps them to stay strong. They also need to apply MPK 0460 to boost the phosphorus. The couple has three cows and three calves. Two of the cows are milking, but they only need four liters a day. This is not good. They have small children and need more milk to help the children grow. This is a problem that needs expert advice from Coopers. Bet, we've had a look at the cows. 
What do you think? The cows are in fairly good body condition. For a milking cow, that would be okay. Though a bit slightly, if you increase the, the feeding to increase a bit of more of flesh. But generally for a dairy cow, good. Mm -hmm. Second observation, I've seen the animal has ticks, the blue ticks. A common problem, the ticks are sucking blood and they can also cause disease. They also have a lot of flies. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they are not able to concentrate on feeding. Because they are busy shrugging off the, the flies. What can she do? We have products which can be used to control ticks and flies. I have a product called Grenade. It can kill all the ticks. It can also kill flies. We recommend a weekly spraying or dipping of the cows. Of course, we have to observe the right measurement. A knapsack of 20 liters will carry 20 ml of Grenade. Make sure you are using the right spraying pump, which gives a sufficient pressure to penetrate to the depth or to the base of the hair. Mm -hmm. It is important because you need to keep this chemical attached to the body of the cow for seven days. It is possible if you are using the right pump and the right pressure and the right concentration of the dilution. Mm -hmm. There are other problems which you can see in cows, which include worms. We need to deworm cows every three months. And the young ones, we deworm every month until they are at the age of six months. And we use the product called Nielsen Plus, which we administer according to the body weight of the cow. So you don't just say it's an adult cow, but how many kilograms. That way, your calf will grow, your cow will grow, and your cow will give you milk, and it will be a healthy cow, which is able to conceive on time. Conception should be, for every year you get a calf from, from one cow. The other important thing is that these cows need to be given minerals. Minerals are important for the purposes of milk production, maintaining the body of the cow, and also for the cow to be able to conceive. The minerals for the milking cow is called Maclix Super. This is the mineral that we give. It's a powder, it's a lick, which we mix with feed, and we, we give to our cows during milking. And even after milking, you put in a shed where they can be licking to their own satisfaction. Those young ones have also their minerals, especially the hay fuss. They have a mineral called Maclic Plus. This is good for hay fuss from the age of six months. They conceive until the day they calf down, you give Maclic Super. So these are the right minerals for our cows. We needed to show Christine how to spray correctly to get rid of the ticks and flies. First, put on your protective gear, mask, goggles, hat, gloves, dust coat, and gumboots. Then, take the cow's weight using a weigh band. This will tell you how much spray you need so you don't waste any. Mix the tractics in a knapsack with water according to instructions. Spray the cow starting at the rear. Cover the hind legs, tail, and udder, then move forward spraying on the side of the body and under the belly. Then cover the neck on all sides. Make sure you don't forget the face and the ears. It should take 15 minutes to do one cow. With the cows properly protected against ticks and flies, it's time to look at another enterprise on the farm. Christian gets more money from selling bananas. She says her bananas do not get a good price, so Frank from Naro came to have a look. Frank, you've seen Christine and Christopher's bananas. You observed them. What did you see for yes. yourself? Generally, the plantation looks good, except for a few things. Uh, for example, uh, the number of suckers per mat is too high. There's overpopulation compared to the recommended of three suckers per mat. Mm -hmm. It is beyond that. Yeah. After harvesting, they leave those stumps for too long. We are supposed to remove them after they have rotten, but we are still maintaining them there. What's the danger of doing that? Yeah, there is a terrible danger because they start harboring pests and diseases as they rot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the moment they rot, you are supposed to remove them. They are now useless. What can they do to improve it? 
They can do a lot. They need to continue applying manure because as you see this place, the soil is a bit rocky, it looks uh, not very fertile. They need to continue applying manure and any other type of fertilizer. They also need to improve on the planting material. I'm not sure whether you are using very good uh, planting materials. Probably that's why the bunch size tends to be small instead of getting very big bunches. Christine, if it's a new uh, banana plantation, these days we advise that you begin with cleaning planting material. And the best cleaning planting material can be the tissue culture plants. What do you mean by clean planting materials? Plants which are entirely free of any pests and diseases, such a variety should be high yielding and sh should also be pest and disease resistant. So, now we know how to manage the banana plantation. We need to get her some clean tissue culture saplings, which Frank has brought from Naro. Now the farmer has gotten that sapling. How do the farmer plant this? The farmer is supposed to make a hole, just like he makes for any other bananas, the other suckers they, they normally plant. In a place like this one, which is a bit rocky, I shouldn't recommend the, the two by two feet. It should be slightly deeper and slightly wider. Maybe we can even go to three by three feet. Then he is supposed to place some fertilizers down and some black soil before placing this tissue culture plant. But because it's too fragile, as you can see, the leaves are very tender. Too much heat might easily destroy it. So it might need some irrigation. And then the farmer is supposed to mulch the plantation so that the level at which the heat is penetrating is a, a bit of reduced. Yeah. And how else can a farmer get a very, very good banana plantation? Once you plant this kind of uh, tissue culture plant, you are sure that there are no diseases and pests in your mother garden. From there, you maintain the good agronomic practices, such as frequent weeding, looking out for any emerging pests, and you destroy them. You do the mulching, you continue applying fertilizers, then you, are, you can be able to have a very good plantation. Even then, from that good mother garden, you can be able now to get the, the suckers and expand your field. So if they follow your recommendations, you're guaranteeing them they can get a good, good price for their bananas. Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. The market is there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> After all that learning from the experts, it was time to play. That was good exercise. Time to take a break. Coming up. Will Christian be able to grow a new type of fruit tree? The couple also get some tips on managing their money. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are still here in Chivumbuka village in Kagoma County, in Jinja district, where it's not only play, but lots of hard work. So let's get on with it. They now know that their soil is too acidic and they need to boost their phosphorus. They know how to protect their cows from ticks and flies. And Christine has had some tips on getting her bananas right. But there's still many things to shape up. Christine wants to grow more fruit. Apples are very good fruit to grow for sale and for the family. She was not convinced that apples can grow in Uganda. So we took her on a trip to a successful apple grower to change her mind. Christopher and Christine, you told me earlier on that apples cannot grow in this region. I said that because uh, we were told that they only grow in Mediterranean lands. Uh -huh. And that climate, we don't have it here. John Baptiste, I'm looking around and I'm wondering what kind of magic did you perform to produce this kind of beautiful, beautiful apples? Tell us. These apples are basically for the hot, warm climate. Uh -huh. So how many varieties are there that do so well in the tropics? We have 40 varieties now. 40? 40, 4-0. Four, four mm -hmm. And they all do well, and they have different tests, but very tasty, and they look very nicely. Yes, even appearance. You know, appearance is also important. Okay. 
but they are very tasty. <laughs> Take us through the process of how does a farmer get this particular variety right. and how does he plant this variety? First of all, we get these uh, seedlings. This is what I refer to as a seedling, the rootstock. Hmm? And then we get also what we call the scions. And this is the particular variety of an apple tree. Now, when you look at this, this is the variety itself. When we cut it, we can then graft it, as you are going to see quickly, hmm? and put it on top of the rootstock. So take us to the process of grafting. How do you graft? I have the rootstock and I have the scion. And remember the particular variety I brought is called Anna. So this is Anna. So I get my knife quickly, hmm? about one foot high, I'll cut. This is the rootstock, Emla triple one. You can trim it a little down. This cutter, hmm? then I'll use this to help me guard my finger because this is a sharp <laughs> cut. Spread. Then get the scion. Try to see the best bud. Yes, I will use these two beds. I use this on that one. Yeah. I can then sharpen. I sharpen away like this. I don't sharpen this way. Hmm? Mm -hmm. But then I can cut myself. I'm interested in getting this cambium of the rootstock mm -hmm. hmm? to touch best with the cambium of the scion. That is making a perfect fit. I have one bud and another bud here. There's a two. Then I will get the plastic tape to help me fix the joint. Make sure huh, that big another knife. Now having done that, you cover this top of the sign with what we call the parafilm. Prevent heat from heating the sire, which is the top. You get the top and cover it as much as possible. Like that, like that. Yes. Great. The next item is to make sure you label date of grafting. And this particular variety is for each apple tree, you need to dig a hole four feet wide and three feet deep in a sunny spot on the farm. Mix the soil with manure, then fill the hole. Mark the center and dig a smaller planting hole. Put the tree into the hole and spread the roots, then fill with soil. Use dry leaves to mulch around the tree. Do not let the mulch touch the trees as it will help termites to attack the tree. Don't forget to water the trees well. Is there any other thing that a farmer should know? When this plant is growing, it has a lot of care that has to take place. You have to cater for the termites, which are a very big threat. So in the process of its growth, you continuously monitor and you start pruning it as early as possible. Pruning an apple tree is very important. It helps the tree concentrate its energy into one stem so that the stem can produce lots of big apples. Cut off extra stems and branches using clean, sharp secateurs. Make all cuts as close to the stem as possible and at a slant so that rainwater can drain off. Branches to be horizontal. horizontal. That's why the weight yeah. is there. Hmm? To concentrate the apple tree on growing when it's young, you need to remove all the flowers for the first four years. How long does it take these fruits, to, I mean the trees to bear fruits? Take two years to start fruiting. And when the fruit comes on, it takes five months, then you chew it. Five months. Mm -hmm. Five months. These uh, uh, tropical apple trees have two seasons in a year, so we have a strice. You remove all the leaves after getting the fruits. The tree will hibernate between four to six weeks, and after those four to six weeks, it will bloom again. Then it will bear fruits. Then after that, after you have eaten the fruit, you remove again all the leaves. Hibernation for four to six weeks, and the story continues. Yeah. 
Christian, like most farmers, has difficulties producing enough food and accessing markets to get a good cash flow. She needs to be able to plan her money to aim for the best markets at the right time. But she needs to learn how to manage her finances before she can do that. To teach Christine and Christopher about finances, Stephen from Hand in Hand paid us a visit. Christine and Christopher, how do you make money from your farm? We sell the piglets and even some of the big ones. Then we sell some young cows. Then from the plantations, we sell yellow bananas. Mm -hmm. Some trees. The trees, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those who want poles for building, mm -hmm. firewood, like that. I see. Well, Stephen, you've been around the farm, you've seen what they have. So how can you advise us? So maybe to know whether you usually keep records on those uh, businesses. No, we don't no, have we are just local <laughs> It's very important to have a record on your business because if you have record, it actually gives you a picture of uh, what you are doing and whether you are progressing on, on the business. It also makes you understand where you are going wrong and uh, how to improve on those areas. And the records also will give you a direction and you'll be able to know whether you make profit for your business or you don't make profit or you make loss. And one of the business records you need to keep is the cash book, where you get money in. After you do your sales, you sell the piglet, you sell the bananas, you need a record. Money coming in, you, you write on the, on the left side, then on the right side. You, have, you write the money you're getting out of the business. Whatever you buy, you put it in the record. By the end of the day, by the end of the month, by the end of the year, you are able now to know exactly whether you are doing well or you need some improvement. The cash book is very important, but it gives you direction. Then from there, in cash book is where you get the, uh, the, the income. You love also the column where you have the income and also expenditure. Income is also the money you get into the business after you do your sales. And also expenditure is where the money is getting out. You are dealing with the production. Like for example, when you sell, uh, you sell your piglet, then definitely that's the money coming in. When you go and buy medicine, you buy fertilizers, you buy all the activities, then uh, definitely that's the money getting out of the business and it needs to be recorded. With that, it will give you a direction or not on the planning of the business and you'll be able now to know exactly how much money you have at the end of the day. The other thing you also need to factor in the income and also expenditure is the, all the activities. For example, you hire people to do the business for you. Do you pay them? Yeah. So if you pay them, then, then definitely that's the money getting out. Other times we have challenges as a farmer or as a business people. We don't differentiate between the business and the private activities. The other also line is for yourself as the, as the business person. You also need to pay yourself. That gives you a direction of the money coming in and money going out. Because if you don't pay yourself at the end of the month, definitely what happened? You'll find the business is consuming money and you don't know where the money goes at the end of the month. And uh, you are not able to progress because you pay people and you don't pay yourself. So we are devised as a, as a business person, as a farmer, the first priority is first to pay yourself at the end of the month. From there, you separate the business and also the private activities. And by the end of the day, you'll be able to list all the income coming into your business and all the expenses you are uh, incurring during your business activities. Then, by that time now, whatever you sell and the expenses you have, you get the difference. That's what we call the profit. And uh, one of the ways to use our profit is to save the money you save the money you get from the profit. You can also use the profit, you reverse it back to the business. Because if you want your business to grow and to move forward, then definitely you need to use that money and then you take it back to the business and your business will be increase the production and you'll find you are doing well in the business. 
It's been another exciting show. But it's time for us to say goodbye to Christine and Christopher. Shamba Shepa! Shamba Shepa is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shepa, to get more information, get involved in discussions and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shepa.